So let me uh, talk a little bit about uh, what is Hextra. So we are a licensed digital asset custodian with offices in Singapore, Hong Kong, and soon in Europe. At our core, you can think of us as a gateway connecting financial institutions to the blockchain and digital assets ecosystem in a secure and compliant, scalable manner. We have over 40 clients to date. So what do custodians do? They are really kind of three critical aspects. One is the safekeeping. So that's obviously custodizing the digital assets by protecting the private keys and uh, supporting uh, secure workflows around the transactions. Secondly, is providing connectivity. So this is connecting the capital and the service providers across the ecosystem, such as exchanges, brokers, DeFi services, asset lending and borrowing providers. And connectivity and availability is very important. So we hear a lot about, you know, mountain vaults, bank, bankers for security. But at the end of the day, if your investors cannot access their assets, um, they cannot trade. And in these markets um, where they move really fast and they never sleep, they're 24 by 7. So we need that security and availability at the same time. And at the same time, we also uh, want to integrate with the traditional financial ecosystem. So this is supporting the standard industry protocols such as FIX and SWIFT. And last and not least is compliance, which we all know how, how crucial this is, especially in this industry. Uh, so we spend a lot of effort uh, building compliance functionality into the platform. So what is uh, what does a custody platform look like? So our, our platform is called uh, HexSafe, and really it's been designed for large enterprise institutional clients. So the kind of features we have is both on-chain and off-chain account segregation with flexible account structures, uh, different type of wallets warm wallet, cold wallet, frozen wallet. So depending on your security and availability requirements, uh, you can use different wallets. Obviously, auditability, uh, insurance, integrated AML and KYC with tools for proving ownership and source of funds on the public blockchains, workflows around all of this, uh, regulatory reporting and uh, connectivity and integration I mentioned before. So today when a financial institution uh, seeks to adopt a blockchain or digital assets into the business and operations, they face many challenges around security, compliance, legal and technical integrations. So I'd like to now talk about um, why we chose to work with Corda in, in particular, apart from the the usual public blockchains. So while the public blockchains, they, they play and will continue to play significant uh, market share, it's also clear that in the regulated markets, we require slightly different blockchain solutions. Uh, we need additional functionality uh, and protections that are offered by the enterprise blockchain platform such as Corda. So as, as we know, there is a race uh, by different countries to issue centra uh, centrally backed digital currencies, what we call CBDC. And uh, a lot of these uh, central banks actually are looking at uh, solutions such as Corda to run those uh, currencies. Uh, because what Corda offers is kind of beyond what you can get in a kind of open, fully decentralized public blockchains. Uh, so we think Corda is very well suited for the regulated financial assets. And kind of the key reasons we chose uh, Corda is obviously the, the enterprise uh, scale, uh, which allows us to run uh, multi-tier permission and, and public networks. It provides control over visibility and privacy of the transactions, uh, ability to develop uh, custom consensus rules, it has a standardized framework for, for representing assets on the Corda blockchain, which is very important. Uh, flexible permissioning, and last and not least, it integrates with the enterprise-grade HSM, such as the IBM Linux one. But in addition, um, 
right through having a sophisticated secure platform such as Corda, we also need a scalable secure infrastructure where we're going to run these highly regulated privacy sensitive networks right this these networks will be public utilities and imagine if there is a bridge uh the central bank's reputation and the geopolitical impl implications if your sovereign currency gets hacked on blockchain so we need a very secure scalable infrastructure to run these networks and this is where the IBM Linux one comes in. Uh, it's a perfect fit, providing all the benefits of the open source, such as being able to run your standard Linux distributions and container platforms and virtualization. Linux one with its cryptographic hardware integrated from the CPUs, CPU registers, firmware-based virtualization, memory enclaves, and all of this combined with the most secure HSM level 4 certified. And all of this hardware security and cryptography is actually integrated into the Linux kernel. So allowing us to run these open source workloads with a level of trust and security, typically not available in the hybrid platforms. So if you think uh, as an analogy, Apple I iOS versus Android when it comes to security, it's very clear having an integrated software and hardware allows us to provide another level of security not possible in a hybrid solution. In addition, uh, Linux One with its HypoProtect services allows us to run workloads seamlessly both on-prem and in the IBM cloud. So for example, we run our development environments in the IBM cloud and deploy uh, on-prem in production. So if we look into the future where we're going to have large financial networks, for example, central banks, major banks, they could be running Linux One on-prem and maybe smaller institution enterprises, they can still participate in the network uh, on the cloud. So next, I would like to show you a demo of our, of our platform. Uh, so, for this demo, we, ha we have this fictitious country called Utopia and we have a central bank, the Central Bank of Utopia, and this central bank uh, is issuing their own uh, sovereign currency, we call it UDC, the Utopia Digital Currency. And in the demo, what we're going to show you is we're going to be minting some additional currency to support the upcoming uh, quantitative easing. And then the central bank actually distributing this currency to its member banks. Uh, in our case, this is uh, the Bank of Cordia. So I will now uh, switch over uh, my screens uh, to the demo. So here on the left hand side, uh, we see our HexSafe platform. I'm logged in as the central bank of Utopia. And the, on the right hand side, uh, I'm logged in as the Bank of Cordia. In the, what you can see here is uh, the central bank, they have two, two accounts, there's a treasury and a money market account, and you can see that they already uh, have uh, minted some uh, UDC uh, here, so we have a couple billion uh, UDC, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to mint additional 1 billion of UDC currency for the upcoming quantitative easing. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to mint some of the UDC, uh, 1 billion actually of the UDC uh, digital currency. Uh, so just for fun, uh, we're going to do this through our API uh, on the backend. So here I'm logged into our Corda uh, Linux One servers. On the right hand side, you can see one of our nodes. So I'm going to submit the API call to mint 1 billion UDC. So that transaction has gone through. Now, if we just so see here, our balance is two two billion. Let's go and see our transaction history, and we can see here there is a, a transaction of one billion UDC just coming right in, right in here. Uh, it's just been confirmed. So if we look at our uh, balances. 
we can see see our balance has gone up to 3 billion of UDC. So we have minted our currency and now the next step, uh, the central bank uh, will be distributing this to the member banks. Uh, in real life, this, this would be an automated process using APIs, but uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to show you uh, how this would work uh, through the user interface. Uh, where we have a workflow, I actually have my colleague uh, on the line and she will be helping me to approve the transactions as uh, through the segreg segregation of duty, actually I cannot uh, do these transactions just by myself. So we're going to go and withdraw from the treasury account. We're going to choose the UDC from our warm wallet and Unfortunately, I have a low limit, so I'm just going to send 1,000 UDC and we're going to send this to the Bank of Cordia, the treasury account. So here on the right hand side, we have our Bank of Cordia treasury account. At the moment, only has 3,000 uh, UDC. So I'm going to initiate the withdrawal. Uh, I need to confirm this through two-factor authentication. And now the transaction is submitted and actually what's happening behind the scenes, my colleague got a notification on the phone and they will perform the first level of approval of the transaction. And that's just came through. So typically this would be kind of management level approval. And now this transaction is actually sitting uh, with the operator. Uh, they, they have this uh, control center where they can actually see transactions uh, in progress and typically uh, this operator transaction approval is M out of N kind of authentication scheme. In our case uh, for this demo it's just one out of one. So my colleague now is gonna sign this transaction. Okay so see the transaction has been signed and sent to the Corda network with a receive confirmation can see our logs here. So if I quickly switch here to the view of the Bank of Cordia, we should be seeing an incoming transaction, right? We're seeing 1000 UDC coming through. This should get confirmed uh, any second. And the balance should be now increasing. So we see the balance just, just increased. Um, now, the Bank of Cordia, they can go through the same process and uh, transfer the, the assets and the currencies to the clients. We're not going to go do that today, but just, just to give you the idea how all of this works, this is our platform, HexSafe, with Linux One in the backend and the Corda network uh, running there. So. I hope this was useful. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you.